This opening section deals primarily with the, uh, the, the, the begetting of Galahad. The first thing we notice with Galahad is that he, being the son of Lancelot, he shares the name of Lancelot because Lancelot originally was called Galahad and he later has the name Lancelot de Lac given to him. This shows us that in many ways the son of Lancelot is a copy of Lancelot. It's as though the son is the second self of Lancelot. And in Galahad we see all those great things that Lancelot could aspire to if he weren't such a um, messed up individual, if he weren't such a man that was wrestling with certain things. And it leads to the question of what's wrong with Lancelot. What is his underlying problem? Why does he have such issues? Or what are the nature of his issues according to Mallory? One of the first places we can look to answer that question is in the actual begetting of Galahad. The story tells us that Lancelot comes to the city where Elaine lives and uh, here he meets a dragon and he meets a lady who is uh, in a very difficult position. In this city, Corbin, Lancelot first meets with a, a lady who is in a prison chamber. She's been put there by magic. Uh, it says uh, Morgan Le Fay has put her there. And it's eternally hot and she's, she's being baked alive inside of this prison. And it's Lancelot who comes and releases her. And as the people say, only the best knight in the world can release this lady. And he lets her out uh, of the prison chamber where she is and she's able to recover. And Lancelot notices that she is one of the most beautiful ladies that he's ever seen. He likens her even to Guinevere, that she's more beautiful than Guinevere. The author here is making a, a connection between this lady that he rescues and Lady Elaine, the mother of, eventually, Galahad. She doesn't say it explicitly, but the lady that Lancelot frees from that chamber, the author is intending us to assume, is Lady Elaine. Lancelot then goes on to kill this dragon, which lives under the earth. And the dragon, in many ways, represents the same thing, the same issue, as the burning uh, prison house of the lady. Well, when Lancelot then goes and is uh, praised by the people, uh, the, the, the father of Elaine, Peleus, agrees to get Lancelot as the husband for Elaine. And Peleus, remember, is the, the king of the Grail castle. He is associated with the Grail and the holiness and divinity that the Grail represents. Elaine loves Lancelot from the minute she lays eyes on him. And if she is the lady from the burning tomb, that's understandable because she's released from her torture by him. Notice burning tomb, we can assume, is something like uh, sexual. It's, it has something to do with a, a sexual burning, the, the, the desire, the, the lust, the longing. And she's released by Lancelot. True love, her love for Lancelot, allows her to escape from that prison house, that vision of the world as a prison. And in Lancelot killing the worm, the, the dragon, he's killing that chthonic, that earthly desire, that earthly... Um, dragonishness to want to conquer the world. As we saw back with Arthur earlier, Arthur Pendragon, who doesn't recognize he's sleeping with his aunt. In this story, though, Elaine gets Lancelot by a trick, and her dame Bryson, who's a, who's a witch, uses witchcraft in order to seduce Lancelot to Elaine's side, and he begets on her Galahad. And when he discovers he's done so, he's, he's infuriated, he's mad. And he wants immediately to kill her. Mallory suggests this is the wrong reaction, that what, that what Lancelot is doing is actually the wrong thing to do. And Elaine, who's a perfectly legitimate wife for Lancelot, loves him beyond, beyond all, uh, all measure. She says, I'll give my life for him. And yet Lancelot doesn't want her. He wants Guinevere. But why does he want Guinevere? Guinevere doesn't give him anything, and she's already married to Arthur. And we have to ask, why would Lancelot seek Guinevere and not be satisfied with Elaine? Elaine represents everything that is ideal in a woman, and beauty, and perfection, and this sort of otherworldly um, grace. And Guinevere represents power, and uh, nobility, and fame, and fortune. And so in a way you could say that Lancelot's real problem is that he is drawn towards fame, fortune, all that glitters. And because of that, he doesn't see the real gold 
of human relationships that he has possible with Elaine. And that's what causes him problems later on. He is incapable of seeing the actual grail, Elaine, even when it's right there in the bed next to him. And for this reason, he fails at the grail quest, whereas his son succeeds.